A warm welcome to all of you who are with us tonight, either in person in the sanctuary or joining us over Facebook or YouTube. We are glad that you are here. This evening, our Lenten observance comes to an end, and we gather with Christians around the world to celebrate the three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Tonight, we remember Christ's last meal with his disciples. But the central focus is his commandment that we live out the promise embodied in this meal. As Jesus washed his disciples' feet, so we are called to give and receive love and humble service to one another. Formed into a new body in Christ through this holy meal, we are transformed by the mercy we have received and carry it into the world. We will depart worship in solemn silence and anticipate the coming days. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. I invite you to please rise as you're able. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the good news. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we hear our readings. The first reading for tonight is from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two door posts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire, with its heads, head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. 
The Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. <clears throat> After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set for you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated. A familiar story for many, yet a confusing one, especially for those present, right? Yes. <laughs> Peter, who we know to be the bold disciple who was not afraid to speak up in any moment of time in ministry, is finding himself floundering on this evening. He is wondering, if you take a look in your gospel, verses 6 through 10, what is going on? He says, Jesus, are you going to, I imagine him kind of whispering, because the room is full, and Jesus comes to Peter to wash his feet, and he goes, are you going to wash my feet? Kind of this little shock, right? No, you're not going to wash my feet, right, Jesus? This isn't how it goes. We aren't supposed to do this, Jesus. Peter was never afraid to correct Jesus, right, in his <laughs> moments, of how it was supposed to be. So when Jesus says, you don't know what I'm doing, but later you'll understand, Peter says, you'll never wash my feet. 
be still confused and responding in, no, 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 this isn't supposed to happen. But then when he said, unless I lost you, you have no care of me, Peter says, well, not just my feet, but my hands and my head also. Wash me then, God. He wants more of a portion of what he's offering. But there's more to the story than what we hear tonight. There's a gap in what I read that you don't maybe notice unless you look at the little teeny numbers. And you have really good glasses. <laughs> yes. And you can see that. Here's, here's what's missing in this in this story that we get, we get Peter saying, no, 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 you're not gonna wash my feet. Wait, yes, 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 my feet, my head, my hands, etc." So that's at one end of what's going on here. But at the other end is Judas, the betrayer, the one who sold Jesus because the stock options looked good. Well, they did, right? A few silver coins in those days would be more than Judas, Judas probably had ever seen before. And we don't hear that part of the story. We re no. No, we don't hear that story. And I wonder, I wonder why. I wonder if I should jump to the lectern. What do you think, Sheldon? And how about I jump over here? I mean, I won't jump, but I'll saunter. <laughs> so the story, if you were looking in your Bible, goes the washing of the feet, and then there's a lot of verses describing Judas and his betrayal, and Jesus talking to his disciples about this betrayal. And then you have the last section that talks about the new commandment to love, or the, the commandment to love one another. And after that, you have Jesus talking to Peter about how he's going to deny him. So we have the happy moments of this story tonight, the washing of the feet and the love commandment, but we don't have the betrayal and the denial. But what's so interesting about that is, well, one of the things that I think is interesting about that is that although we're highlighting the happy, or the high points, right? Uh, the low points aren't far away. I mean, they're sort of, I'm gonna turn off my mic. <laughs> they're right there with them. Yeah, they are. My microphone isn't behaving. <laughs> so this love commandment is sandwiched between <laughs> denial and betrayal. And Jesus says, I'm going to give you a new commandment that you love one another. This isn't something that uh, Pastor Amy and I talked about, but in the New Testament, there's four kinds of love. Mm. Four different kinds of love. Mm -hmm. There's erotic love, love between lovers. There's friendship love. But the, the love that Jesus is talking about here is God's love. Unconditional, never-ending. There's nothing we can do to lose it, nothing we can do to gain it. It comes to us faster than our foot on a pedal that presses down and you speed through town. <laughs> oh, not that that's ever happened in this room. <laughs> Sometimes reading scripture together with other people is really helpful because you hear, yeah. hear it from um, different versions and you can kind of play with some of the words that why the translators chose the, the words and the phrasing they did. So in our version, the NRSV that we read tonight, it says around that love commandment, 
or actually toward the beginning, it says, having loved his own who, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And I don't know if that caught you. It caught me because it's the past tense. And I thought that was strange when it's talking about Jesus' love. He loved them till the end. Well, didn't he love them forever and ever, even beyond the end? That's what I thought. So we looked into that a little bit. And the better translation says, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them completely, in completeness or perfectly. He loved them always and forever unto completion. Well, then they hear it a little differently. That this love is the kind of love that just doesn't end. It's not he loved them to the end. It doesn't end, and it's so incomprehensible because it's such an awesome love, it's hard to figure out. So even Peter's confusion back then, we still, thousands of years later, are trying to figure out this love this God we have, and the love that God gives. Mm-hmm. Because the kind of love, the kinds of love that we experience in the world have limits. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, that although your parents loved you, there were limits. <laughs> there were limits to their love. No greater rejoicing happened than when parents put their kids on the bus and sent them to school. Bye-bye! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about this. This is kind of overwhelming. And I don't mean just for Peter and the others who were, all wanted to sit on the same side of the table to have their picture painted. I'm talking about, like, us too. Jesus doesn't want to just love us until it's not convenient anymore. Until it's not meeting his needs. Until... We run up, to run up against something where there is irreconcilable differences. Jesus loves the betrayer, dear God. Washes his feet. Washes his feet. Eats with him. Washes his feet. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that scene, what, how... how vulnerable a thing that is that Jesus was doing. And I wonder if, I don't know, but I do wonder if like Judas was completely like, he acted as if, darn right he should wash my feet. Does he know who I am? I've heard people in church say that. Do you know who I am? My response to that is always a child of God who needs more love. (laughs) That's not the answer they were looking for, and maybe not the answer that Judas was looking for in Mm. that whole experience of having his feet washed. So Jesus gives us a commandment to love like Jesus. And we're like, whoa, that's a little much. It's a lofty goal. I don't even know where to begin with all that. How do I even... What do I even? It's even difficult to receive that love. Yes. That God pours out. Some, mm-hmm. maybe many in this room, maybe we don't think we're worthy of that kind of love. Maybe that's the case in our own relationships. But we are. God claims us and names us as children pours out this love, whether we want to accept it or not, it's there. Yeah, do you notice Jesus never says, hey, would you like me to love you? (laughs) I mean, never does he ask if we want him to forgive us. He just does it. Could I please wash your feet? Could I, all right, (laughs) could I please? (laughs) Lord have mercy. (laughs) Jesus' love is humble love, serving love. This love that, um, it's easy to talk about in our life. Yeah, yep. God says love one another. Seems simple, right? In practice, is it that simple? Maybe it's easy for the people we enjoy being around. <laughs> Certain family members, maybe. But to love everyone like Jesus does is a... High expectation. (sighs) 
There's a hymn in uh, Philippians chapter 2 where it says something about this kind of love. Hmm. He emptied himself unto death, even death on a cross. And by emptied, it means like squeezing every last ounce, like squeezing a sponge, right? Squeezing every last ounce of love <laughs> out so that, so that we may know, even for a brief second, that we are amazingly loved. So it's hard to compare the love we share with one another with this kind of love. I, you know, we we're just trying to think, and any example we have falls short. Mm -hmm. um, but I was sharing with Pastor Paul that um, in the past few weeks, some of the deepest joy I felt was around creating a care package for someone, a friend in my life, who has a big important event going on unbeknownst to her, right? It was a total surprise. And maybe you do this all the time, if so, great. But, you know, it was a box of lots of good stuff. And uh, just to be able to give that love, but with the eagerness of knowing how they will receive it and the joy that they'll have in receiving it, was it brought me joy for literally like weeks as I was plotting this without her knowing, right? And like I said, not to the level of what this love is, but the way that giving this love just brings us joy to share it and also to receive it. This kind of love that Peter received, even though he didn't want his feet washed, even though he was the one that Jesus said, you, you're going to deny me. Peter almost couldn't give of this love until he could experience it from Jesus himself. Yeah. That he could go, whoa, this is what you're talking about. Okay, now I'm starting to wrap my head around it. So when you call me to do this for others, I'll give, give it my best go, right? And his best go is, I do not know this man. <laughs> <laughs> Yet we all fall short, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> How many of you have heard promises from children that you know they're not going to keep? Is that true in this room at all? You ever heard that? I promise I'll clean my room. <laughs> when Jesus comes and does it for me. <laughs> I don't know. So there is this quote um, uh, that I want to share that I didn't find, actually. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Amy found it on Working Preacher. Oh, yeah. On Working Preacher, and she kind of <laughs> summarized, I mean, she sort of put it in her own language, but... Uh, Peter cannot love like Jesus before he experiences Jesus' type of love. This is a lesson for all of us as well. Washing feet, sharing in the meal, dying on a cross, healing the sick, touching the untouchable, loving the un lovable, stepping outside the sphere of what's good and right into the land of uh, kind of the netherland and widening the circle so that all might know God's love. Because you know that people want to limit that love, but at this table, in this washing of feet, Jesus tears away any pretense there is, tears away any sort of notion that there are limits to who receives God's love or why. And calls us to live into that. These are his examples to his disciples right before he's going to die. Just in case you don't get it, guys, ladies in the room who were gathered in that upper room. Yep, one's going to betray me. Yep, one's going to deny me. But still, wash each other's feet like I've shown you. Stick together and love one another. That's how people will know you're my disciples, he says. This uh, crazy love that doesn't make sense in the world we live in, that breaks all the barriers, 
and shows this greatness. Because God loves us. We learn to receive it in time. Sometimes it has to be chipped away so we can receive it so that we are able to love one another in the best way we know how. I think that's pretty good news. Good news, because we could all use some, right? Absolutely. Amen. And all God's people said. <laughs> Amen. Let's try that again. <laughs> so now that you're awake, and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. We'll sing together, Great God, Your Love Has Called Us, number 358. I invite you to stand as you're able as we join in our prayers. As we are united by the serving love of God in Christ, we pray this holy night for the needs of the world. God, you call your people to hand on what we receive from you. Form all the baptized into teachers of faith. Form from one generation to the next, give your church hunger for your promises in the sacraments and joy in receiving and sharing your word and love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your creation provides all that we need. Cleanse and protect the water you have given for washing and drinking, water on which all life depends. Sustain crops and herds that provide food, Teach us how to live so that there is enough for all. Hear us, O God. You redeemed your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Establish just leadership in place of, of tyranny and peace in place of war. Hear us, O God. Jesus loved his followers to completion. Grant assurance of that love to all who need it, those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or overlooked. Heal the sick and embrace the dying and comfort the grieving. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire our congregation's ministries of service that we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to serve and bless the ministry of deacons throughout the church. Hear us, O God. 
Your mercy is great. Your glory shown in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for generations of the faithful who have proclaimed our Lord's death. Unite us with them in hope until he comes again. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Hear these and all our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. We'll remind you that the offering is just outside the doors into the narthex. Uh, money that has been put in envelopes will go to the churches, and that which is not is just kind of loose change or or bills will be uh, decided on by the by the host congregation. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places. And you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So I want to invite you to take out your, your elements. I'm going to do a little lengthier Great Thanksgiving tonight. So we'll, we'll follow along. I will be slow. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread, and drink from this cup. We proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. 
Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The needs the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. I invite you to undo your packaging. As I say, the body of Christ given for you. You may consume the bread. The blood of Christ shed for you. You may consume the wine. May the body and blood of our crucified and risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. On Monday Thursday, the stripping of the altar until it altar area until it is bare is a ritual. As we recall how Jesus was stripped of his glory in these days. On this night as he was arrested and tried and put before the governor Pilate. So hear these words from Psalm 22 as we watch our elements of worship be taken away until we join together again on Easter Sunday morning. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. 
Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. For the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow down, shall bow all who go down to the dust. And I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it.